Got a nice, looks like a large mouth on the bed. Oh yeah, that's a nice large mouth it looks like. Oh yeah, she's nosing it. Got her. <laughs> she swallowed it. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> That's a nice one. It is so important to have a good pair of glasses because what happened was I threw in the bed and I, and I let it sit there and I was barely shaking it and she nosed down on it. Very uh, lethargic fish. She nosed down on it and right when she got real close and she nosed down on it, I popped it and she inhaled it. And I could see her eat it. So I knew when the time my hook set before I could even feel it because she just, Inhaled it. Didn't feel the tick or anything. That was so cool. It's so cool when you can actually see them and how they respond to your presentation because you can trick them. It's a rain's ring crawl. And I just dip the claws with the orange spike it. A nice solid fish. She's mad now, boy. Ooh, she did not like that. I can get it to where I take it right by her and I kind of bring it up next to her and bump her with it. And I'm making her mad by the minute. She is not happy. If you just throw it in there, and that's important, that, the importance of having good sunglasses because if, if I couldn't see what was going on, I wouldn't know how to, how to work this fish. And so instead of just throwing it in the bed and sitting there and let it shake, which I do most of the time, I'm taking the bait and I'm bringing it right up next to her and I'm bumping her with it and she's turning on it. And eventually when I keep doing that, eventually she's going to get mad enough to, to bite it. Ooh, she mouthed it. And you can only do this with a fish that's what I call locked on. And that's the fish is not swimming off the bed. You know, it's staying in one spot and I'm getting her to turn around on it. You wouldn't be able to do that. She just, ooh. You wouldn't be able to do that if you threw in there and she swam off. This fish is committed to this bed, but uh, she's being very difficult to catch. And that's a typical largemouth, a big largemouth. Ooh, she hit it. Ooh, she's getting mad. I'm working her. It takes a little time, but seeing is, that's everything. I mean, your sunglasses are the most important tool you have when you're bed fishing. Oh yeah. Got her. Got her. Oh, that's a good one too. <laughs> It's a nice one. Oh, man, that took forever. I felt like forever to catch her. That's a nice large mouth. I worked her with that rain's ring craw and she finally opened her mouth. But I wouldn't have been able to catch it if I couldn't see that fish, you know. It's such a cool deal. What a beautiful large mouth. I'm gonna get her right back on her bed. And this bed was right on an edge of grass, on the inside edge of a, of a grass line with some rock in the area. We'll let her go quick, let her go do her thing. And what they'll do is they'll kind of, especially bigger fish, they'll pick an area next to a big rock or a piece of brush or even a, a nice grass edge because it's kind of like a, 
an area for them to protect. It helps them protect their nest easier. So that's kind of what, it, when I'm looking for beds, I'm looking for those type of areas. Got her. Oh, it's a big one. Oh my goodness. It's a big, big large mouth. <laughs> oh my, look at that, she swallowed it, oh my, that is a beast. For up here in Connecticut, this is a big one, you guys watching in Florida or California, you're like, yeah, okay, there's a little one, this is a big, large mouth, my goodness. That's crazy. Next time you guys go bed fishing, try a rain's ring crawl. <laughs>